Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me again. I'm super excited for tonight. I've got my hands on the Star Adventurer Mini for the first time. And tonight I'm gonna to show you guys just what's possible with such small gear. Let's get into it. So when I first got this thing out of the box and looked at it, I just could not believe how small it is. And I've seen pictures online and you guys would have too, but you just can't get a, a gauge of scale. So here's a beer can for you. This thing is absolutely tiny. And just because it's tiny doesn't mean it lacks any design features. And that's one of the things I love about it, just looking at it straight away. Because it is part of the Star Adventure lineup, it does have the um, Vixen dovetail style mount on the front, which means you can put a declination bracket on it, a counterweight, counterweight on it if you want, which is really, really handy. There's no more going to the shed and trying to makeshift a counterweight or any of those sort of things. That's really, really cool out of the box. And the other thing too is it uses what's pretty much industry standard now for these, these size mounts is the Star Adventurer uh, wedge base or the Latitude base. So it makes the stability of this thing really, really good and polar align it, um, polar aligning really, really easy. So um, I'm super excited about that. And straight up the guts, we've got a port here to poke a polar scope through. So polar aligning isn't like an add-on bracket or anything like that. And the polar scope illuminator is still that finicky little polar scope illuminator, so some of you guys uh, might not like that. Now, when we look around the outside of this thing, there's no actual buttons on it. There's one simple on-off button and a couple of ports, a snap port and a USB port, and that's because it's Wi-Fi controlled. So everything that you do with this mount is through the app. And when I was looking through the app, this thing can actually do a lot of stuff. So astro time lapses, you can set up a whole imaging sequence for sort of deep, deeper space sort of stuff. and yeah, that's really, really cool, but I won't, be using, I won't be using any of those features tonight, but I look forward to um, diving in and trying a few of those out in the future. So simply tonight, I'm going to be shooting a big panorama, and just to show you guys that you don't need big gear to shoot epic shots. So let's put this thing together and see how it goes. For those guys out there who think they recognize this tree, yep, you're correct, I have imaged it before, but it was the summer Milky Way pointing in that eastern direction. So tonight I'll be shooting it in the southerly direction and this tree in this location's the gift that keeps giving. I've got full 360 degree access right around this tree, so it means I can shoot it any time of the year, depending on where the Milky Way is in the sky. So I'm doubling up on the foreground again, but it's all good. So I've put this rig together and obviously we've got the mini mount but I wanted to sort of strip everything back and show you guys what's possible with absolute minimal gear. And for you guys who do a bit of hiking, you're just super conscious about weight. And that's one thing that I'm not, not normally conscious of. I just <laughs> pack everything in the car and drive to where I need to be. So a few hikers out there, this is an absolute strip back version of what I normally do. So I've got the Alan Wallace um, Z bracket here to give myself a level base off the declination bracket. And on top of that, I'm simply gonna use a ball head to attach the camera. And that's it, I'm not gonna use like an indexing pano head, two-way heads, any sort of flashy gear. This is super basic, because I just wanna show you guys that you don't need all the gear to get good images. And to complete this package off, I'm gonna be imaging with a lens that I haven't used before. So it's the Samyang 24 1.8 autofocus lens, and it's a super tiny lens. So this whole package here is just the ultimate travel rig. So that's the plan. And obviously I'm gonna shoot a full arch panorama. And even though I'm only using one camera, I'm still gonna try and do some hydrogen alpha. So um, I'm just gonna kick back, relax, have a feed, wait for it to get a bit darker, and we'll get stuck into shooting this image. So that's the foreground all taken care of, and man, did it get cold quick. <laughs> I think um, I think beers while I'm out here shooting might be over for the year. I'll have to trade them in for hot chocolate or something like that. Anyway, 
We've got that four grand all sorted. I ended up with settings of F1.8, ISO 2000 and two minute shutter speeds. Um, and it all looks pretty good. I was just simply focused on that tree and the rest just blurs out into creamy oblivion. Um, when I set my tripod up here, I set it to the correct orientation uh, for the sky that I want to shoot tonight. I'm going to wait till the Milky Way rotates around a bit more and that gum nebula is a bit lower down on that western sky. So the core is a little bit higher up in that uh, eastern sky. So yeah, that was all taken care of. Polar alignment was done and it was super simple with this mount. It's actually funny because it's so small. I've been used to using the GDI mount, which is obviously a lot more rugged on that big tripod, and you can sort of manhandle it a bit more. But with this, it's so small that I just had to be careful. It almost seems like a toy, it's that small. Um, but I ripped off a couple of test shots just then, and yeah, tracks beautifully. One really disappointing thing is the lens itself to shoot the stars with. Now, there's comments been made in the past when this Samyang lens first came out that it was you know, the Sony 24G master killer and all those sort of things, but I just simply haven't seen it here tonight. You know, you know what the quality control's like with Samyang lenses, I could just have a bad copy, but even stopped down at f2.8, it's still not perfect from corner to corner, so that's really disappointing. So when I shoot the sky, I'm gonna have to stop it down to at least f2.8, um, but it just is what it is. So I've got probably about an hour and a half to kill before the Milky Way rotates around to the orientation that I want it to be in. So what I think I'm gonna do is throw the hydrogen alpha clip-in filter in and just shoot a few random spots of the Milky Way that has hydrogen alpha in it. So I'm not gonna waste my time and shoot a whole panorama and you know not shoot areas that, or shoot areas that don't have any nebulosity in them. So I'll concentrate over in that Western sky, stack a bunch for that um, gum region, a little bit around the Magellanic clouds and then over in that Eastern sky where the core is near rising. So. Hopefully that works, I don't know, and to be honest, I don't even know if how clipping filters work with such a wide angle lens and wide apertures, so we'll just see how we go. If it doesn't work, I just simply won't include it in the image, but anyway, let's get this filter in. So that's all the sky exposures in the bag. I ended up with uh, f2.8. Like I said, I had to stop it down because of that lens performance. ISO 1000 and two minute exposures. And the sky tonight was super clear. It was really, really good. And the sky was just on fire with airglow. So I can't wait to get home and see how much of that airglow I can get out of those raw files. But as for the mini, Honestly, I, I sort of forgot I was using it. It was really, really similar to using um, the Star Adventurer. So, yeah, an absolute rock solid mount. The only thing I'll say is, when you first open the app, it's not that intuitive. So I actually had to get a bit of help from a couple of mates, Joel, the Thai photographer, and Richard from Nightscape Images. So thanks guys. They helped me with a couple of settings on the app so that I don't have to keep keep the app open. I can just turn the, turn the mount on and it'll just start tracking for me. So once you can get your head around that, this thing is an absolute treat to use. And yeah, tracking accuracy was awesome super lightweight and i hope it just goes to show you guys what's actually possible with minimal gear and <laughs> i know there's something cool about having a massive rig and twin cameras and twin big lenses and all that and trust me i get it <laughs> but a stripped down really really portable rig that can go in your backpack that you can go hiking with that can take super high quality large panoramas is phenomenal and that's exactly what this is super lightweight lens minimal brackets, tiny, tiny tracker. It's just awesome, I'm, yeah, I'm really, really excited. So yeah, I hope it's motivated you guys to go out and get, get some images. And this is a super affordable rig. So if you're in the market for a super lightweight tracker that you can put in your bag, I cannot recommend this highly enough. So anyway, that's a wrap. I'm gonna go and get into a nice warm bed. And until next time, cheers guys.